Hey guys, today I'm going to show you three ways that you can get your retro games looking awesome. This is going to work uh, for everyone uh, from those with a lot of money uh, to those with not a lot of money uh, or no money. Um, the first option is a real CRT. Short version is that if you're willing to spend a lot of money, not on the TV, but on the consoles, then this is a good option. Otherwise, you're going to have to do some work, and that's okay. Stick around if you want to learn more. Otherwise, skip uh, forward. Uh, if you go to Craigslist or uh, like uh, Facebook Marketplace, you can find some pretty cheap options if you live, uh, especially if you live near a city or in suburban hell. You might also have some luck at old uh, marketplaces. Uh, it depends on where you live. I saw a couple cheap TVs from like 20 years ago uh, that were like 30, 40 bucks like last week. And they, were, they weren't fancy, uh, and that's okay. That's actually, like, in my opinion, that's what you want. You don't want something fancy because it looks too clean, and it doesn't really give you the effect that you're looking for uh, if you're like me and you like when things look like shit. Only thing to watch out for, uh, make sure that you're buying a TV and not a computer monitor because uh, it's really hard to get uh, a Nintendo 64 to play nice with a VGA cable without line doubling and other bullshit. You don't, you, we're trying to keep this simple. Don't, don't worry about that. Uh, you, you, you need to have the right thing to plug into it if you're gonna get a real TV. In a perfect world, we would all have a uh, million dollars and we could buy every console and every cartridge and uh, live forever. But life isn't fair. If you don't have original consoles and the cartridges, there are other ways. First, what not to do. Beware clone systems. Some of them are fine, but some of others, especially like the, the HD upscaling ones, they do that scaling internally before they even send the signal out to the, the, the composite out or whatever, which means that they're gonna do line doubling and you don't, you don't want that. Similar situation for HDMI to RCA downscalers. Modern computers really, really, really fucking don't like to display at anything lower than 480p no matter what. Uh, unless you are willing to summon a demon. And if that's the level of effort that you're willing to put into this project, then this video isn't for you in the first place. Just don't use your computer for a real CRT if you want it to. Anyway, what I've found is a good solution is to find an old console that's easily moddable and has good emulation. So the Wii, the Wii is the best option. If you can find a cheap Wii and you're willing to do some soft modding, I promise it's not as hard as it sounds, it just takes a while. You can have a genuinely really fucking good setup and it's also, you also have a Wii but hey, maybe you don't want 
a big TV in your house or you don't want to learn how to mod your Wii. That's okay. Option two is the annoying one because only people with a lot of money are going to find it useful. So if you don't have a million dollars, skip again. This is the fancy, this is the fancy option. Retro scalers are so cool. They're like if the regular cheap crap shit RCA to HDMI converters that look really bad and add a ton of input lag weren't bad. Uh, these are designed to, ta to take the signal from your original hardware and scale it in a good way so that it looks good on a modern TV without introducing lag. The new RetroTINK 4K has some really good shaders built in. I've only seen, I've only used the last gen 5X, but that it's good and the 4K gets great reviews from enthusiasts alike. So I'm sure it's worth the $750. Lastly, if you don't have money, this one's for you. Over the last few years, five, I don't know, uh, CRT filters have gotten really good. The good news is they're free. The bad news is it's annoying to set them up, but I'm gonna help you, it's okay. What, what they do is they, they emulate the behavior of a CRT, both in the way that it handles signals behave and the, the physical behaviors down to the individual phosphors. This technology needs at least a decent GPU to, to do this. Uh, and although it will work on a 1080p screen, it tends to look better at higher pixel densities, such as 4K. If you want to try it, the easiest way to do this is with RetroArch. It usually handles all scaling, aspect ratio weirdness uh, semi-automatically. That doesn't mean it's easy. Uh, it is, RetroArch is many things, but intuitive is not one of them. It's worth it though, because once you've set it up, you're done. I'll leave a link in the description for those interested. They'll walk you through setting it up, getting it running. It's, it's worth the hassle, I promise. Once you've set it up, I, I recommend starting out with the CRT Royale PVM NTSC Composite Genesis Rainbow Effect preset. You don't have to know what that means. Just, just look here, there's the folder path on the screen there. You can also tell RetroArch to start uh, always with a shader, that, like I, I do that. Other options include running a shader or like reshade or shader glass, but these will only behave properly if your source is being displayed at pixel perfect resolution. Most software takes some convincing to get working like that, and even if you get it there, you'll also likely have to disable window scaling, especially if your monitor is small or your resolution is big. Fuck any of this up 
and you'll get ugly line doubling, blurry scan lines, and other scaling artifacts. This is this is why I'm just I'm telling you you got to use RetroArch, and and you're, you're once look you're, they're gonna have you do a blood oath, but once it's done, it's done, and it's it's over. Hopefully this helped you, and uh, if I got anything wrong, I'm sorry. I'm not an expert. I'm stupid. Like and subscribe, and next week I'll show you how to open app data. I see you.